we've had a few minutes of discussion. So, thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. I'm sorry I didn't catch it before. I, I'm sorry. I didn't So um, originally I had suggested 600 feet and, and I, I, you know, for Jack Sutton's place is right up the street from, from Becky and mine. We always walk up there almost every day, but, and, and that in my mind is clearly uh, a place where you see cars parked taking pictures and, and a spectacular view. Um, the, uh, and, um, but the red represents um, the 600 foot contour and the black line represents the 550 foot uh, topographical contour. Um, the, the same is true for um, Lord Hill, which is at the end, uh, end of the Guffle Road. Um, basically the little black dot inside the red line on the Lord Hill is where the old Gawler farmhouse is. Gotcha. Okay. If you're familiar with that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't know that a lot of people go up there to take pictures or not. I know the Union Church holds its Easter uh, sunrise service up there. Beautiful view. It is a beautiful view, um, and uh, um, you know because it's not a through road or isn't anymore. Um, you know that might be part of it, but anyway, that that you know I thought a larger area should be incorporated uh, where you actually because you get a large you, you get views from beyond where the six hundred foot topo line is. Yeah, me too. I, I don't. I don't have any objections to going from six hundred to five fifty. None at all. So if that were the case, then then in the language here, we you know where it's uh, you've included that and areas of Belgrade accessible accessible by public road within uh, an elevation of above sea level equal or greater than five hundred fifty feet. Right. One uh, wordsmithing thing that I might suggest to the language that I have in my memo, and this is because it goes back to uh, more accurately relates to the review criteria by which we have to make our decision in the work, the existing uh, review criteria in the ordinance mm -hmm. is uh, on that first, well, the first full line, it's underlined. Uh, starts uh, recreation sites and resources. I would uh, change that to recreation scratch sites and, and scenic resources, because that's the wording that's used ah. in the, um, in whatever article that is five or whatever of the ordinance in terms of these are the, you know, what's in the findings of fact and law that's the language that's used. So that it would be read re recreation and scenic resources. I'm sorry, George, you lost me. Where are you? Uh, the first line of, in my memo. Oh, okay. Uh, on the first line uh, that's underlined. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I see. Find it? Yeah. So, so can you repeat then the change? Uh, so it. it uh, cross out sites and add the word scenic after and so it would read recreation and scenic resources. So can I throw out a hypothetical? And I don't know how this would fit in. If you're up at um, the golf course, I mean, people oh, yeah. take pictures up there. Would would that not be a recreation resource? It would be. I, I would think it would be so. It would also be a scenic resource. It would be a scenic resource. So even though it's privately held, I think that would still well, be part of the consideration of. Yeah, but it is a public space in that, you know, especially when it's not golf season. 
Correct. You know, my wife and I were walking up there earlier this week sure. before golf started. Right. And we're not golfers, so and, and don't belong to the club. Mm -hmm. Well, it is a, a gorgeous view. Um, and actually, um, there's the golf course club, or is it open to the public? I think it's open to the public. It's a lot of public. Oh, you're right. Golf course. Right. It is a public golf course. So, so from I think many angles, I think you I think it passes the straight face test to say that that would be a spot in Belgrade, which would be included as a. Yeah. So here's an example when Christina and I came here to interview for the job. That's one of the places we were taking. Oh, just to see how. how okay. Well, well, that kind of tells you something. Yeah. So. So okay. yeah. So in addition to mine and Hill Road, we should probably. Add a reference to that. Okay. Um, so if we did that, so we. The, the only thing, um, I mean, it's not publicly owned. It's open to the public for members. I, I, I just don't know how the owners of the golf course would feel about it. Right. It, I was curious if by not mentioning that by name, because it's privately owned, publicly available right if still just by referencing that it, it to me it falls under a scenic resource at a minimum these public recreation and scenic resources to me it's a scenic resource what i don't know is um i can't recall it, i mean do this i i you know well i looked on a Look, scan the whole town on an on, online topographical maps. Gotcha. And because uh, uh, the ones I use for deer hunting are all ratty, torn, and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> the uh, um, still gets lost. <laughs> and uh, and ancient too, I might add. Um, the um, I, what I don't can't recall is if that little knoll there has a name. Well, so we could that. reference it by name. I think it, I think there's a, a local name for that. I don't know. I can find out. There's somebody used to live on, on top of that thing. Right? right, right. And I can't remember. It's a guy I think that uh, used to run the campground where the town facility is down. Oh my gosh! Really? <laughs> Maybe it's part of it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah that's right. I heard you remember called it. Ah, okay. Good. So, so maybe if that we could consider using that named reference of that knob or hillside also. So we'll have to find the name. I think so. All right, thank you. Thanks, George. So, but we definitely want to make sure to include mine at Hill Road, as was suggested, right? And then, and then quite likely the other reference that we're just talking about, that no. Okay, so that's under specific application requirements. And to be clear, we're striking references to things that are not in Belgrade, so. Right. right, so you probably caught all that, right, Anthony? Like anything? Yes. In it, in yes. It. Oh, and then we're adding. Are we adding Mina Hill or Mina Hill Road? Oh, Mina Hill Road, because okay. I don't think there is a Mina Hill. Okay. How can there be a Mina Hill Road without a Mina Hill? I think there is. A, <laughs> think there is a, you had to be at town meeting to understand. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you have? Oh, I didn't know that. But anyway. Yeah. So for now, Mine Hill Road, apparently. Yeah. So we'll have to find out if there's actual reference to it. Oh, I'm one end of it. Maybe before you even get to the hill, there's, that, there's always a, a beautiful plot of Ken and the East there yeah. in this yard. <laughs> Yeah. Sand Hill yeah, Sand Hill Cranes. I just saw a couple. Yeah, of them yeah, which is one there. Pretty yeah. interesting. That's pretty cool. Yep. Well, you gotta send that end on the background too. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Sephlokaiyo, ten, 
15 to 20. Wow. Um, Peter, I have a question sure. uh, for everybody. Mr. Dewan talked about how uh, these um, uh, view shed analyses uh, typically go out at least three miles and then only higher elevations uh, from three to five miles, with five miles being the maximum mm -hmm. extent. Um, there's nothing in DEP's regs that talks about this, but I didn't know if somewhere in here we should specify that um, that it should be a minimum of, um, you know, it should go out a minimum of three, three miles from the location of wherever the proposed solar facility is. Yeah, why it's self clear, but yeah, I, I, I agree with I will agree with that. Well, I'm just repeating what he, you know, I mean, this, this is, yeah. Uh, I mean, how far is it from Hell and Hill? Great How far is it? Have to measure Google Earth or something. <laughs> well, the way I would suggest doing it is a minimum of three miles. Right. Not a maximum. Yeah, I don't know the answer to your question. Distance you want three miles is quite a ways the way the profile is straight up on Hollow Hill. Um, yes, I'd like to know how far it is. I mean, we got 550, which includes a lot of the top of house, which is on the back side, of the right? Area. Yeah. Um, I should probably mention that I didn't in my memo include Howland Hill because it's private. You know, there's a bunch of big houses up there, but there's no, you know, it's not publicly accessible as best I can tell. Um, so, I mean, I just looked at it on Google Earth, but. So even though it's not publicly accessible, we can still see it from the lake. Right. It's still at 550 range. I, I mean, so I'm jumping ahead a little bit, Greg, but um, I've also suggested later on, you know, under prohibitions that um, that so if somebody put a solar farm up there, it would be visible from Great Pond. Mm -hmm. So my suggestion is that on the site list of sites that I've suggested where solar farms would be prohibited, that it would be at elevations above 550 feet as well. So that would preclude Howland Hill. Well, part of it. It would, well, the top part of it, yeah. I mean, parts of it, part of it's in Oakland, but uh, but that's facing the other direction. Mm -hmm. you know, wouldn't mm -hmm. see that from Great Pond. Um, anyway, that I only mentioned that because that was sort of my way of skipping that cat. But anyway, the um, so that, I, I just wanted to explain why I didn't include it in this list uh, as a, a viewpoint uh, because it. It didn't seem to me to meet that public standard. Okay, but we could include it in the visual from seeing it from the pond, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm or, throwing well, out. or more importantly, you know, visible. Um, it, it should be part of the, you know, what those homes up there can see from a nearby solar farm down below somewhere. 
I, I think that's why, you know, within whether it's three miles or we choose some other distance, but because that's that's the way you have to look at it, I think. I don't really want to see anything from the phone. And that's still on my property, my 76 acres into the mix too. You know, I don't want to see the solar panel in there. I don't want to look at it from the phone. Right. You can see it from the phone. So you can see it from Radium tight to North Bay, all the way out around State Point, over by Bear Street Camps. You see all that property. So, you know, I'm throwing my property into the mix as well. So, um, yeah, as long as there's a, a stipulation that we can't see it in the pond, then we're going to have to outdo the three mile yeah. thing, minimum. Yeah, minimum. That's a, I think it's a fair and reasonable suggestion to go with the three mile minimum. Again, the objective mostly just to be having some baseline methodology standards, right? Three miles and then the 550 um, elevation. elevation. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I'm good with that. Because since the comprehensive plan doesn't list these, mm -hmm. we I think we need to list them in the ordinance. Exactly. So George, did uh, would that language be inserted in the first sentence there to read a geographical representation of all areas within a minimum of three miles? Yeah, of someplace there. along there. Okay. Yeah. So just a time check for everybody, it's 645. So we, should, we have 15 minutes before, I think the patents are up next, right? On our agenda? Yes. So are we on the next page then? I do so. Well, somebody <clears throat> else has something. I do not. Does anybody else have anything? If not, let's boogie. Let's keep going, going. So we're on. Do we go through visual simulations part? Or I think we're there. Right. I, I have some minor. So with the memo that you provided, George, you had some um, some edits that were yeah. made in there. Any revisions to those edits? No. So I like the language is, is um, more active, you know, visual simulations are to be provided rather than should. Striking the reference of USSF, going to solar facilities, you strike the word thereby and then include and also allow but abutters. Strike the word primary before residential and strike the word structure before dwelling unit. Yeah, we, we'd already decided that we wanted to use residential dwelling units yes. and use the definition from the Shoreline Zoning. Yes. Yep. And number two, and all those things that are listed there. Um, we would actually already discussed those. Yeah. Things. Yeah. Uh, but before we move on to that, in in um, four little I oh yeah IV. Uh, yeah. I had one other thought about maybe again mm -hmm. with the objective being to sort of firm this up a little bit in terms of who does what and how. Um, where it says visual impact assessment must be prepared by a design professional trained. I was wondering if it would help uh, sort of put some uh, guardrails on this uh, that it be by a main licensed landscape architect or other design professional. Mm. So I, I online I look for companies in Maine that do this kind of work. The vast majority are landscape architecture firms that I, I found. I found. Quickly, I found eight. 
two of them are GIS firms. So this wouldn't preclude them. Um, if the, you know, they are trained in this, um, yep. um, I, I didn't look at any of their work products or anything like that, other than I did see something from Dewan, <laughs> as it turned out. Surprise. So, so yeah, that I think that's adequate language that would um, uh, allow for certified professionals. Um, don't have to be only landscape architects. It right. could be others, yeah. but having the cert, that's important. Yeah. So read that again one more time, George. Yeah. So in uh, little four there, mm -hmm. right. uh, the visual impact assessment must be prepared by a an insert main licensed landscape architect mm -hmm. or other so that it would read or other design professional. All right, I got it, I just wanna make sure. Yep. Then we've talked about the additional submissions for number two, right? Right, we talked about that last time. Yep. Did Anthony, Anthony was here, I think. Did you catch that A is there twice? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Can, can I, can I, before we go on, go back quickly to something on um, the first paragraph where we just talked about all the locations or whatever? Uh, right after the small letter I, whatever, it says a visual and cardiographic uh, cardiographic uh, analysis, the next sentence down. Um, it said refers to a visual from the uh, well, a geographic representation of all areas of where the solar facility from its highest points is visible from the surrounding impact area. It says should uh, be presented. Uh, should doesn't mean much. Should that be must as well? Yeah, no. I know the yeah, you're other right. ones, yeah. Uh, yeah. George wrote it, so it's more. Uh, it's more specific. active, yeah. right? Less yeah, passive. Should, should doesn't mean anything. No, it's just a recommendation. Of the sure. Yeah, it should be shall. I like that idea. Thanks. Good catch, Rich. Okay, are we then down to uh, development standards for approval? Which takes, um, looking at the memo from George, so certainly using the KV Cog model, but then um, to supplement that, include these things. Um, yeah, so I'm suggesting that we have some siting prohibitions on the premise that. I mean, I'm, I'm actually, may not sound like, but I'm actually a supporter of solar power, but I, I think with any kind of project like this, there are places that are appropriate, there are places that are not appropriate, um, where on one hand you can minimize uh, the negative impacts and on the other, you, you know, it, it's much far, far more difficult. And so, you know, the shoreland zone, I, I don't believe they should have any, these larger um, or these commercial facilities should be in the shoreline zone. Likewise, for the village and, and critical resource conservation districts that have been met, um, as they're representing the conference plans, map uh, representing the conference plan. Um, um, C areas of 20% or greater slope uh, above sea level, um, not unlike in shoreline zoning. Um, and uh, some uh, Camden has a similar kind of requirement, not not just for um, um, for uh, solar facilities, but for commercial development in general. Uh, and then I, 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 this is what I was trying to uh, reference earlier, Craig. Um, I, I would suggest adding a D, and that would be in areas with an elevation above sea level. Of 550 feet or greater. So this would that would capture, you know, the summit there by Jack Sutton's Lord Hill, 
and Howell on the Hill in North Belgrade, which a lot of people refer to Lord Hill as the highest point in Belgrade. It's not Howell on the Hill. That's a good point. So it'd be Shoreland Zone. Um, I know I keep going back to this. Um, we've already included the lakes, all the lakes, right? We're not going to. All, all gonna, the lakes were listed. Uh, earlier, yeah, yeah, yeah. As, a, as a viewpoint, yeah, that was part of that but analysis. Should that be in the siting prohibition or is that taken care of? Well, where we I, you and I may disagree as we get down the line here a little bit, uh, Craig, on whether um, this goes to the point uh, how much of the solar facility can be visible, be allowed. Uh, you, I, I understand your point. Uh, it, it should be zero. Uh, and I'd just like to have a discussion about that based on Mr. Dewan's you know, suggestions. Mm -hmm. um, but but we're, we are, haven't gotten there yet. That's further down the list. Um, okay, so citing from the lakes, not included. Not yet in the citing prohibition. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you can't install a solar facility in the, in the lake. lake, but that's not what Craig's saying. He, he's right. saying any place where it's visible from the lake, right. whether to add that to the list. Right. I guess I'm saying let's leave that to the, the, the visual impact analysis. Yeah, I, I agree that there can be situations where you can see it somewhat, some piece of it, but I'm not sure that would be uh, something that should throw the project out entirely. Well, and, and then there's also, we have to remember that there may be ways for them to mitigate that mm -hmm. too. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. so we'll see a little bit of a solar farm and we should be worried about a cell tower. I hadn't thought of it that way. I'm sorry, Craig, I didn't quite hear you. So if we're not worried about seeing a little bit of a solar farm from the lake, then we're not worried about seeing a cell tower. Um, to be honest with you, seeing a cell tower doesn't bother me. Doesn't mean either, but what's that? Doesn't mean either, but um, I'm just yeah. yeah, no, right. Right. Or, or a wind tower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So it sounds like what you're trying to show is like how, how to be equitable in no matter if it's a solar or, or this or that. If it's it's the amount of what's yeah. being shown. If it's if it's uh, if it's a huge amount, then that's very objectionable. If it's a little bit piece of it, then that might be comparable to seeing like a cell tower. I mean, the hard part is this is all in the eye of the beholder. Right, correct. Yeah, I know. George, I'm just curious on, on your uh, suggestion of areas of 20% or greater slope. In your mind, did you did you propose that because of the uh, aesthetic value? That, you know, it's more likely to be seen if it's on a slope or because of the potential for runoff? Both. Both. And we can't build a house on the point, so. We can't develop a shoreline zone. Not in the shoreline zone. Do we know what the slope is? Because I know that's been a concern about the proposed project off the Oakland Road. Do we know I don't that? know. I, to be honest with you, I've tried to stay ignorant of that project so that I was just curious. my biases don't get entered into this discussion. Yeah. It's a good question. Though. I don't know the answer, but my thinking is. Probably not. Yeah. Pretty, it's pretty flat generally. Yeah. I don't know what it is right at the lake and stuff, but mm -hmm. I, I don't know that that's a very steep area. Yeah, generally speaking, there aren't that many 20% slopes in, in town. I mean, how much hill would certainly be one, but. I think down my my mother's is kind of. It's steep, bro. Right? So. Yeah. <laughs> um, So time check for everybody, it's like 6.58.
are we okay right here um, that we have included item D under citing prohibitions, which includes or adds areas above 550 feet above sea level? Did I say that as you represented it, George? Yeah. So we'd have four and, items in this. Yeah, and, and, and so it's great to already reference that we, in addition to this side of the double map, then the Howland Hill side, up, which is on the opposite side, yeah. illustrates what would be impacted there. Okay, so I'm good with that, but I'm not good with, say, that's all we're going to include. Yeah. We'll revisit it and maybe we'll include some, some more. Okay. Before, yeah. But I'm good with everything we have with the D, but I'm not saying that's going to be final. Okay. Right. And there might be something else yeah. as we go along that we include. Absolutely. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. So yeah. you guys have a preference on section seven, whether or not to add those sign prohibitions at the beginning of that section versus the middle versus the end? I mean, I think, I mean, my intuition tells me just put it at the very beginning because this sort of scratches things right yeah. off. Yeah, that would, that would be my sense. Mine so that too. Somebody that's going through, okay, I, you know, let's think, I, I might like to open, build one of these in Belgrade. Oh, no, let's move on yeah. to a different channel. Okay. Because okay. there are, in the town ordinances I've looked at, I haven't seen anything comparable where somebody, the town comes right out and says, these, these sites aren't appropriate. Yep. That all mine would be in the first. <laughs> you know, in a lot of ways, I think it's quite fair to an applicant. Well, it's clear. It's yeah. clear. It's clear. And I, have, I have another question. So, so George sent this around earlier saying, just to, just double checking this over the decommissioning language that we talked about previously. So we're just talking about sticking this right into the KD COG ordinance where in, in place of the, the decommissioning language that they have. Um, uh, I can't speak for the others. Uh, I mean, I looked at it and it, it, you know, that's what I recall us yeah, right. deciding upon, but you know, I don't, I can't speak for anybody else. Yeah, and you're right about that. I mean, the, the, the group did agree that this was going to be our decommissioning language. I just wanted to double check to make sure, since there's a section in the KB COG template about decommissioning, that it's just a matter of taking what you guys have already approved and putting it in that spot. That is my exact recollection that we do that. that and George has spoken what he thought. I'm telling you what I'm thinking. Does that make sense with everybody else? Yeah, I can't quite remember exactly, but if we all approve it, then yes. Well, if, if, if it would make you feel more comfortable, um, just knowing that we're heading in that direction, we can make an official you know, vote on that so it's minuted if you would like at another time. But I think just knowing the direction that we're going, I think with yeah. taking that language out so, of it. So maybe give everyone a chance to just re-review that again and yeah. yeah. vote on it at the next meeting. Yeah. Is, yeah, can that vote? No, okay. okay. <laughs> just knowing that the intention though is good, just like knowing where we're going yeah. is really helpful. The, the one thing I did pick up on is when the town attorney reviewed the subdivision ordinance and the financial there, he had recommended we eliminate performance bonds. Oh, that's right. And um, okay, I'll we'll, go back. I'll go back and I'll parrot that language. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think you the revocable letter of credit instead. Good, excellent point. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, yeah, that was in an email, right? From the town. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Peter, if I may suggest before we move on to the patents, and I know they're waiting in the uh, yeah. in in the queue here, um, but um, maybe just for cleanness, if we could um, just deal with the other prohibitions, so that then we have a nice clean break. Oh, okay. Where to start? Um, um, so other prohibitions are items. Uh, under two, yeah, A and B. Yes, correct. Okay. So patents will we'll be right with you. We're almost there. There. Thanks for your patience. 
Okay, so yeah, let's do this. So other prohibitions that are listed here, the development or construction of solar concentrating power plants are prohibited, as was suggested. And B, transformers and other electrical equipment using halogen or PCB oils as coolants are prohibited. Um, speaking to the, the B first, uh, both of those, if they spill or has a Yes. hazardous waste. Um, yes. Some transformers still actually use PCB oils, as hard as that is to believe, mm -hmm. um, including the ones you see up on the poles or the old ones. Mm -hmm. There's still some of those kicking around. But um, the, uh, and uh, and so, you know, you, you need to be concerned about uh, alter, uh, there are viable alternatives, mineral oil being the principal one. Um, with regard to A, um, the, those kind of so-called concentrating uh, power plants are the ones that you see oftentimes more in arid locations like in California, actually in Sub-Saharan Africa of all places where they concentrate with mirrors and basically turn water to steam. Use a lot of water. Um, they're the ones that have some potential for um, disorienting or um, even hurting birds. Um, but they use an incredible amount of water and, you know, it's just not a technology. I don't, I mean, there are none in New England. There may never be any in New England. I, I don't know. Uh, the only ones that I could find were in the Southwest. Mm -hmm. Jimmy, Jimmy kind of strange in the they use a lot of water, but most of them are found. In yeah, no, exactly. Or like I said, in the, in, in the Sahara, you know, oh, where it's, it's not like they got water to burn. So, so at least if we list these, even if it's unlikely, then we're saying, okay, these types are not to be part yeah. of them. And there are some other towns that have that a similar kind of requirement. Excellent. So are we in agreement that the other prohibitions should also be included here then? Yeah? yeah. Okay. If we like that, then are we okay then to wrap up the prohibitions part? Then when we meet again, we'll be picking up from that point going forward. It should be item three. Okay. Yes, Anthony. So I put a memo on your desk. You can take a look at it, proposing a timeline. And you don't need to talk about tonight. We can talk about the next meeting of how we get from here to November 8th, which will be election day, which we want this on the ballot. Yeah. But the probably the most important information is the last bullet. Uh, in order to make this timeline work, you would have to complete your work on this ordinance June 16th. That's four meetings from now. So, so I know later in the meeting, you're going to talk about the possibility of some special meetings. Now, you know, maybe one thing to consider is if you think it's going to be more than four meetings, it is um, a special meeting simply to work on solar. Yep. And then lastly, uh, as you guys all know by now, uh, my last day as town manager will be May 31st. Uh, However, I'm willing to volunteer my services to the planning board to help you guys through this project, the solar ordinance. Uh, but I do have a condition and that is that uh, uh, my support and uh, any comments that I might make would be just welcomed as a consensus of the group. Thank you. I really appreciate the offer and I would welcome your involvement. I just want everyone to feel that way. And if, if they don't, then no hard feelings on my part. Okay. I look yeah. forward to that. Yeah, no, that, thank you. Appreciate it. Well, yeah, well, thank you very much. All right. I'm out of it. That's excellent. All right. Hey, uh, <laughs> hey Tyler, come on in. The show's about to begin. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Good, thank you. Uh, So, okay, 
Patton family, I think I think I still see you there. Thanks for your patience as we get through this. Um, you're you're our next uh, order of business here, which is the Shoreland application that you have presented to us before. The location is at two nine four Timber Point Road, Map eight A, Lot fifteen. The purpose is to change the garage roof to a peaked roof to accommodate two bunks and a bathroom. This is a non-conforming lot and a non-conforming structure. No change to the footprint. And uh, Richard, thanks for helping out. Sure. Um, so I'm just kind of going back to that application. Just one second. Everybody have that in their packet. Here, Here it is. <clears throat> and see, Richard, could you help us out here? Uh, I'm seeing both the original, which that's a good way to do it, right? Because we have the original, then you go to the corrected version, and we show what um, values were changed based on our last conversation with the patents right, right. <clears throat> so um at, at this point and were the patents able to talk with you about what was expected uh yeah we, we spoke okay. uh most of the you know uh, we, we stated and uh so originally on their original application they had Proposed square or excuse me, present square footage 360 square feet and proposed at 720 because uh, they thought they were doubling their footprint. However, they're not right doubling it at all. So that was corrected on the corrected version. And I'm thinking that because they're putting two bunks in the upstairs of the shed. Perhaps that's why they added a bed. However, there's no plumbing in. So, okay. Um, so, to the best of my knowledge, the bedroom does not require plumbing. Right. Yep. I'm just so, sure all clear. yep. <laughs> I, I'm I'm with you. So that way, we go on number six, where it says on the original, where it says present number of bedrooms two. Yes. Bedrooms to be added zero. Right. Uh, then on the corrected version, we go to two and one. Right, because they're including the bonds. Right. Yes. Uh, meanwhile, I think everything else remains the same. Everything was the same, and uh, as I recall, everything was acceptable. It met the height requirements. And I think that was pretty much it. Kind of cut and dry at that point. They just needed those couple of corrections. Okay. Once again, the footprint is not changing. Sure. So, certainly take a moment to look. Quick question. So, so Sarah, you have a question for the applicants or Richard? Uh, no, the, the, uh, the comment about the application. Okay. On item number six, uh, it asks, when did you purchase the property within the shoreland zone? And uh, it calls for month and year. So originally we, we knew that it was November, but now the new application only says the year was purchased. So we only okay. got to just we just got to add the November. Right. Yeah. So originally it was 11 19. It should stay 11 19 mm -hmm. per the reading of this. Can we just add the 11 there? No. Mm -hmm. What are they asking? So, patent family. So, patent yes. family, what we're asking about is um, on the original um, application on item number six, when it asks when the purchase was property. When the property was purchased within yes. the shoreland zone, the answer was eleven nineteen. On the corrected version, and and that's what we're expecting as a month and year. On the corrected version, it just says two thousand nineteen. Oh, so I well, think, 
by reference, we're still saying this November yeah. of 2018. Correct. Correct. All right, thanks. I'm sorry to be a stickler for details, but it's an, it's an important thing. Um, so for housekeeping, Richard. Uh, uh, 11. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That would be good. Uh, any other questions, Sarah? That's it. George? Yes, sir. I, I would just note that if you look at the uh, surface wastewater disposal system application, uh, that was uh, approved by Gary Fuller on 11 26 19. So, since that whole section deals really with wastewater, uh, you know, it's shortly thereafter that it was, uh, this new system was designed. And Good point. So, by referencing that, that, that yeah. And, and I, I would also stuff. note that it was designed for three bedrooms. And now we have a total of three bedrooms. Right. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Craig pointed that out last when we were talking with the applicants, I, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, does anybody else have any other questions for the applicant? Any other questions about the application in general? Uh, not a question, just a comment. To, uh, if we approve this, it probably ought to be a condition that this thing not ever be, when I say ever, not be converted to dwelling. I see. Well, to a what? A dwelling. No. Yeah, no. But we're allowed, so we, as I understand it, we're allowed to put beds up there and a bathroom, correct? Or that's what you're voting on? No cooking facilities. I'm not sure if you heard Rich, but he said, uh, so, no cooking facilities. Uh, correct. Yes. Correct. Right. Correct. Heads up there, no problem, uh, because the septic system is designed for three bedrooms. If you right. had effluent going from that area to the septic system, yeah. then it's it's just another guest room, basically. Understood. We're just going by the definition of a dwelling unit, which is an important thing. So, oh, that's fine. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay. Thank you. So, so, um, so, so, Rich Baker, I think that's maybe a probably a good thing. To, you know, maybe that's a standard condition as well. I don't, I don't know. But whatever the case may be, I think it's noted for this one to go forward. So, um, uh, we're okay to move ahead. Uh, in my mind, I think we're going going into the findings of fact and conclusions of law aspect. So, hang with us. We're going to get through this. Speaking of finding of facts and conclusions of law. Uh, I don't know whether it, I'm just thinking of saving the town photocopying. But lately, they both of those have been in the packet uh, to each of us. Um, maybe we do need to have it, but it seems to me that we go through it. I'm not sure it's necessary for us to have 10 pages of application types. I'm just talking about photocopying stuff. Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah. well, actually, if you just, if you guys maintain your own copy, just so you can follow along. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, that would be good. Yeah. It's a good suggestion. So, so in this case, I will write on one copy provided to the CEO uh, and the, or the front office, however it's going to go. And then maybe if the rest of the people want to just keep a copy of the uh, of this, so we can follow along each time, that would then save some some copy. So the only copy that would be needed here at the meeting would be yours, right? To right. Be completed. Yep. Yep. Precisely. So. Good so if we could get a copy with the holes in it, just keep it right on a binder. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Kevin, you're on copy that to get this. Right. Do you guys have a copy? I have copies right now, but if we can get them, I mean, we got pictures on some, one side. And the okay. So I'll, I'll make everybody a clear copy, copy with three, three, three holes in them. Yeah. You want the whole along the same side? <laughs> <laughs>
True. All right. So we're going through the findings of fact and conclusions of law. Applicant is George Patton, address 294 Timber Point Road, tax map 8A, lot 15. Uh, the applicant finds on, on today's date, which is 420. And the project details change, changing the garage roof. Okay. Uh, the application was was presented to the planning board on. This was the second time, correct? Yes. The first time was back on 317. Okay, thank you. Bless you. Thank you. And today's date was 421. 22. These findings of fact and conclusions of law were developed in conjunction with the consideration of the application permit. Um, So standard language reviews has been um, uh, application submittal. How does that go again? Application material. Uh, application uh, submissions and, and uh, the public record. Yeah, that's it. Okay. All right. So starting at number two, um, uh, conclusions of law. So based upon the application materials, testimony, statements, and evidence, documents, and other materials submitted to it and the above findings of fact, the Belgrade Planning Board finds that the project is uh, permitted under section 14, table one in the ordinance, and further makes the following conclusions based on the applic applicable provisions in section 16D of the ordinance. So, um, so for the patents, uh, please bear with us. We'll go through a number of these things that we will vote on. And we'll do a roll call vote for each one. And, and then there's another one we do a roll call vote for a number of them. So you'll see it as we go through it. Just want to let you know, it's, it's not just an up or down thing. You have to go through a, a list. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so that num number one, um, that it will maintain safe, safe and helpful conditions. So, um, so Sarah, Sarah, you've not missed anything yet. We're just going through. Um, I'm sorry. I need to check out. Understood. So that we're on that this will maintain safe and helpful conditions. So by a vote, the board that this standard was met. So safe and helpful conditions. So um, all those in favor. So Craig. Yes. And Sarah. Yes. yes. George. Yes. And we have a. And I just want to make sure I'm asking the right question. We have a quorum. Uh, with so, Rich. With, what's that? Okay. We have fever, so I'm not Okay. All right. Awesome. Sorry. Uh, thank you. So, Rich? Yes. Yes. And I, too, am in favor. So that's five in favor, none opposed. Um, two, will not result in water pollution, erosion, or sedimentation to surface waters. By a vote, the board found this statement was met. Okay. Sarah? Yes. George? Yes. Rich? Yes. I too. Five in favor. None opposed. Number three, we'll adequately provide for the disposal of all wastewater. Wastewater. So by a vote, the board found this standard was met. So Craig? Yes. Sarah? Yes. George? Yes. Rich? Yes. Peter? Yes. That's five in favor. None opposed. One, two. Uh, four, will not have an adverse impact on spawning grounds, fish, aquatic life, uh, bird, or other wildlife habitat. The boat, by a vote, the board found this standard was met. Craig? Yes. Sarah? Yes. George? Yes. Rich? Yes. I two in favor, five in favor, none imposed. That 
Five, will conserve shore cover in visual as well as actual points of access to inland waters. By a vote, the board found this standard was met. So Craig? Yes. Sarah? Yes. George? Yes. Rich? Yes. Yep, five in favor, none opposed. Uh, six, will protect archeological and historic resources as designated in the comprehensive plan. By a vote, the board found this standard was met. So yes. Craig, Sarah? Yes. George? Yes. Rich? Yes. Five in favor, none opposed. Uh, that seven will avoid problems associated with floodplain development and use. By a vote, the board found this standard was met. Craig? Yes. Sarah? Yes. George? Yes. Rich? Yes. Five in favor, none opposed. Number eight is a, a whole slug of stuff, um, many of which will not be applicable. And as you'll see as we go through this, um, oh, this is relative to section 15 land use standards. Um, so number eight is in conformance. So, so we'll go through all these things, but the question is by a vote, the board found this standard was met based on evidence in the record and further as follows. So that A, um, minimum lot standards. I would say NA, yeah, thank you. Uh, B, principal and accessory structures. Appropriate. So I'm just gonna say yes. Uh, campgrounds, NA. individual D, individual private campsites, NA. E, commercial and industrial uses, NA. F, parking areas, NA. G, roads and driveways, NA. H, signs, NA. I, Storm water runoff. With the condition. So if I say yes, uh, C conditions, would that be acceptable? J, septic waste disposal systems. I would say yes. Yes. K, essential services. L, mineral exploration and extraction. Okay. <laughs> M, agriculture. Okay. N, timber harvesting and land management roads. Okay. O, clearing or removal of vegetation for activities other than timber harvesting. Okay. P, Hazard trees, storm damaged trees, and dead tree removal. Q, exemptions to clearing and vegetation removal requirements. R, revegetation requirements. S, erosion and sedimentation control. T, shoreline stabilization. Mm. U, soils. Yes, mm. based on the word septic. I'm gonna actually use the, that same word, based on septic. Septic design, can I say that? Yeah. Septic. Uh, v, water quality. Would it be it's yes? One of the things where you know the water quality is being conserved or protected. I would. It is an issue. It, I think technically it, it comes under it because we're doing something that can change so much. And I agree. I'm going to say yes, and then see conditions. Uh, w, historical and archaeological sites. Uh, X, resource protection. Uh, so under, so patent family, so um, we have a standard condition. I'll read it just so you hear it once anyway, right? Um, can, 
uh, manage stormwater runoff from a new or expanded structure in accordance with section 15i of the Belgrade Shoreland Zoning Ordinance and the main DEP's best management practices as outlined in the Conser Conservation Practices for Homeowners publication. Um, such measures are to be put in place prior to building use. So no, please note that this is a standard condition that applies to all permits unless the board deems it unnecessary. Uh, so I, I, does, there, does anybody uh, think that this is not applicable? <laughs> Right, I believe so. So that's our standard conditions. So this would still apply in your case, as we talked about um, this. Um, and I'm sensing another condition, Rich, that, that we may want to include in this one. Is that correct still? Yeah, uh, I think that's appropriate. Uh, do you want to take a stab at trying to just give me a sentence that I could? Uh, yeah, it would include it with the condition that uh, Yeah, I forgot all about what the condition was. Yeah, <laughs> when we were talking about it, it was to not become a dwelling unit. It, it, oh, would, okay. it would have become a dwelling it, by not adding a bathroom. Yeah, yeah. Our, our kitchen. Kitchen. I'm sorry, yeah. cooking facility. Jesus and Crow, thank you. Cooking facility to uh, approve the project. Uh, provided that it does not become a residential dwelling unit, specifically that no cooking facilities shall be uh, established. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so provided that it not become a dwelling unit specifically by not adding cooking facilities? Yes. So I'll read it. So provided that it not become a dwelling unit specifically by not adding cooking facilities. So we have two conditions. One's the standard one, and the second one is the one we just talked about. With the dwelling unit aspect. Um, now, do we have to go back to eight and vote on it? I, yes, that, I think that's a good way to do it, and then we can vote on the whole thing. Okay. Right? So, um, so based on eight, which is the twenty-five or so different things, most of which are NA, but we had a couple of guesses. One was stormwater runoff. Another was septic waste disposal. Uh, another one was principal and accessory structures. Soils, were mm -hmm. Soils and water quality. So we had five that applied. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So uh, by a vote, the board found that this standard, this is about land use standards, was met based on the evidence in the, in the record and further as follows. So by a vote, that this was met. Craig? Yes. Sarah? Yes. George? Yes. Rich? Yes. I two am in favor, so that's five in favor and none opposed. Uh, then we go to the whole application. And just wanna make sure we, I, I'm very clear then also with the patents. So, um, so we're going to vote on this application right now. Um, you've heard us go through the entire thing so far. There are the two um, conditions. One is about the stormwater runoff, which I know you're very clear about. And the other one is about the dwelling unit, which we discussed tonight. So you all, are you good with that so far? Okay. Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, three, decision. So based on the above findings of fact and conclusions of law, on today's date, which is 4 22, that the town of Belgrade approved by a vote. This is where we vote. Um, so all those in that all those in favor of this. So Craig. Yes. Sarah. Yes. George. Yes. Rich. Yes. Five in favor, none opposed. The shoreland permit application of George Patton.
Um, with the above conditions, which we just discussed and at a meeting on four, two, developed these findings effect and conclusions of law and adopted these findings on today's date. Two, two. So this has been approved, and it will be mailed to you. Um, please, uh, I, I can't speak for Richard's availability, but if you have any questions, I would want to make sure to, to direct anything to him, and he'll be able to communicate about what's going on. So um, I wish you the very best of luck. Thank you very much for your dealing with us. Yeah, thank you all. Very welcome. You're very welcome. It was a very nice application that you put together. We really appreciate your time and attention to detail. <laughs> we really do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your camp. Yes. <laughs> we, we do. We do. <laughs> Excellent. We'll see you here soon. <laughs> all right. Right out. Thank you. All right, so uh, so Richard, I have what I've written on. Can I just give that to you right now? Sure. And um, the application, which I don't have. I, I have the original. So we'll have to so sign that application. Yes. Okay. Okay. Tyler, thanks for hanging in there with us. Yeah. We're we're getting. It. Oh, okay. This is stand by. John Doe's and Jane Doe. Yep. So this will go with that. Yep. If I could send it to you for a second. And this is the original. Um, the corrected original. Yes. So today's 4 21 22 planning board. Uh, Sarah, do you mind if I go, just start off to my left? Go to Craig next. Sure. For, for that. And then we'll go to you. You're right there. Thank you, sir. No, sir. I'm not opposed at all. Not opposed. I'll be right back. I need to buy a break for a second. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
That is on law 14A. Right oh, oh, that's, that's on 14A. That oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I, I missed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the num so just to be clear on this, so then the, the numbering of the lots as you went along from 8 and 11, along Dyer Lane. Let me show you. I have the uh, subdivision plan here. We made up with. Yeah. Two large, two I, yeah. I do recall this when we did it with Don. Yeah, you were, yeah. you were there. Yes, sir. You were the only one that was there. <laughs> quite, quite rare to have a, a subdivision of that area that hasn't been developed. But this is not 14. You've got to blow it up for scale to new one. So as you drive in Dyer Lane, yeah. Um, it's it's all along. Big, another big one there. Yeah. Okay. In 10, 9, 12. So lots two through 13 exclusive of nine are restricted from any further subdivision. Where's 13? It's the common lot. Oh, duh. Okay. Yeah, seven yeah. and a half acre common lot that goes down to the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. Yep. The road's already in there. Yeah, paved road, underground utilities, all built to town spec, never taken over, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can see, you know, relative to Pino Drive, which was established in the late 80s and built out to the 90s, you know, just on lot one of Dyer States, they have one, two, three, four, five lots that back up to that one. Mm -hmm. So it's right. Not dense by any means. I saw, did I see a pad? Or some kind of a landing area, if you will, for either materials or something. Yeah, exactly. We might build a house. There's a, a local fellow here that would like a house built on that front corner. And uh, that was the plan to start the spring until material prices continued oh, to buy yeah. and exceeded his budget, unfortunately. Yeah. So we're actually, we have the foundation pour and pour the second pour on lot three tomorrow morning. But that's the next that we're building on. And that's by having the entire development, we're staggering starts, and you know these folks won't have tailgates banging, nails and compressors running all day. We'll be back here, and then you know, we may go to this one, then we may come back up here. So it just makes the experience that much better for the folks who live there. And I have the same interest as anyone who buys in the development because I own the adjacent property. So yeah, the better I do it, the better. All right, all right. And the the big motivating factor for a smaller lot here. The buyers I built this house on spec, word traveled. There was a few real interesting parties. I, I met with a few of them. The folks I'm under contract with are two young doctors. They're moving from out of state. They have contracts in the hospital. And the idea of having essentially a farm here, you know, 15 acres of rolling fields was just so overwhelming. And I found that with most buyers that that's not what they want. They like you know the aesthetics, they like the feel, but the idea of having to mow it three times a year, find a farmer to hay it, mm -hmm. it just was was too much. Mm -hmm. And and I have interest in keeping this maintained. That's why I'm keeping that buffer with the road so that I can keep it mowed. And uh, kind of this sets the tone for all future mm -hmm. development out back. It's interesting. I would be just the opposite. I would, you know, you and me both, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's the the market right now. Yeah, the folks uh, that are buying it here. You know, if somebody's us. moving from Boston or wherever, you know. Well, then that's just it. This is huge. I mean, one point eight when we walked the, the province. Oh my gosh, I'd never imagined having a piece of space. Like, <laughs> oh, how much more are they going to ask for? You know. But, <laughs> kind yeah. of funny. So lots one. I'm sorry. One, nine, and 14 can be divided. Correct. Yeah, that's the first note. And obviously, we want to use frontage on Dyer Lane. That's why we have the 201 feet there. The access is off the Dyer Lane. We want to come off the Dyer Lane. Forgot about the uh, original name of the uh, adjoining subdivision. I, I was on the plane. That was Lazy my first Diva, stand on the plane. Plenty yeah. board. They actually brought uh, Jack and um, Mark brought in their sign with a beaver and you know a cut tree or something to the planning board meeting. <laughs> it was just too funny. 
Yeah, they changed the name. They? they did. <laughs> they did. Yeah. Now, in this case here, if we prove it and do it with a letter, you get us a whole application. Um, I think we just need to approve the plan, don't we? That was my understanding from yep. my lawyer. That's why they prepared that on the 20 pound paper for signatures. It just has to be recorded. That's true. I think that makes sense. And is that your understanding, Richard? Is it? Yes, uh, exactly what Tyler just said. <clears throat> my understanding is that we just need to sign the, that paper uh, and just uh, make sure it gets the assessor so that the assessor can do it. Yeah. I mean, as long as we end up with one of the signed copies Correct. in our file, right? Account file, then that becomes the document. And I think you can sign any of the copies with up here and it'll work for our filing purposes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's another reason why there really wasn't an application involved with it. Just yeah, yeah, we went back and forth. Yeah. I mean, I, kind of like what we did with the beer one last time. Yeah. We just, Signed it. I mean, at most, maybe a letter or something, but not, not an application. Right. So, Tyler, where are you at with the uh, a lot of trust from the land? Uh, I call the dump. Right? Where are we, Matt? Yeah. So that was that was my plan to pursue that until this opportunity uh -huh. presented itself. I was after uh, Dawn for many years with interest to buy this and. As many other folks were, and we never were able to strike a deal. And he didn't like the idea of piecemeal and rocks. And I had sort of written it off as as an opportunity altogether. And got an email. Here we are. So that's just on hold. Well, I've got the next eight years of my life planned out right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is which is great. And you, your son will develop the uh, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Okay. That will be even more expensive. Okay, so it's fourteen being divided into two lots. That's in line with the note that's here. Mm -hmm. We have very cool bribes. I'll tell you that. Thank you. Right in town. Yep. Okay, so if that's the case, what we're doing basically is approving applying changes on one lot, right? Changes. This is not unsimilar to what we did to, for the subdivision on West Road. Precisely. Yeah. So, did you need to include some sort of letter with that subdivision since I wasn't privy well, to that? It, it was just a cover letter for the drawing. Hmm. But, you know, I mean, the bottom line is the signed drawing being in the project file. Right, so for right. future reference. But at I, the see, level, no. I mean, the deed it, at the Register of Deeds is that's legally what's important. Right. Yeah. I just didn't know if I needed to draft up something for no. See, he has a little here actually. Yeah, I agree, Sarah. I think everything's right here. We just yeah, need yeah. signatures. I'm, I'm fine. We're, by signing, we're we're committing to this. I mean, if if it was something more complex, right? You know, where um, I, I can't even think uh, a whole bunch of lots being created or uh, new lots being created or uh, redesign of the road location or or something like that. That might be a different matter, but. This, this is pretty straightforward kind of stuff. Yeah. So I think we get the signatures on the, would you call it 20? Well, they're not doing the mylars anymore. So this just can't have a crease. It's, it's just special paper that the registry requires. They're, they're That's why he wouldn't let me hold it. Do you blame him? No. <laughs> I told you that. And I, and I think that for our records, if you want to sign this one, it's the one Sarah has, whatever, whatever yeah. works, because we I had we, these two. Right, we need to keep one, I, I think. One yeah, no, we definitely do. Yeah, we definitely. Yeah, one. we could sign, I'll take, I'll keep one. I guess uh, if we could sign three, that would be ideal. Sure. Yeah. 
<laughs> I, I know I have one I can share. So in terms of um, administrating this aspect of it, since there's nothing else going on except approving line changes on the paper, um, I think we want to make sure some facts are given to Richard so that we just need to have a cover letter that says, on this day we approved this, uh, and maybe reference the other things. Um, Oh, I think, yeah, I, I don't even know if we need to do that. I, when I was talking about a cover letter, I was talking about like other subdivider, uh, subdivision owners have in the past with the, they've submitted the drawing and they'd be just a short cover letter saying, I'd like to establish, I'd like to take this lot and divide it up into two or whatever, you know, that, that's what the people did um, with regard to um, the subdivision on the West Road. Oh, so be, in this Where case, email would suffice. I don't know if we, if we shared that either. I didn't know. I, I, I yeah. have an excerpt I would put it into our agenda, but I didn't share the whole time. Yeah, that, that's fine. I, I mean, it, most importantly, it's just for us to have the, the approved, in my view, the approved drawing in the project file. I, I would agree. Um, so I, I guess at this point, there's nothing else to do other than to vote to approve it. That's right. all I can think of. So would someone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion on uh, establishment of lot 14A. Perfect. And seconded. Any more discussion? So roll call vote. So all those in favor of the creation of lot 14A on the subdivision in favor. So Craig. Yes. Sarah. Yes. George. Yes. Rich. Yes. I too am in favor. So that's five in favor, none opposed. 14A is in play. Great. Thank you very much. All right. So let us sign. Um, you want three things signed, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so would that this, be one? The, Probably uh, the most yeah. important for you, right? Does everybody have like a Sharpie? Yeah. Well, no, you can borrow this one if you yeah. want. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it's not mine. I don't know, you should calculate it. Take longer to sign it than it did to approve it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I want to go take and go to the We don't have, we don't have extra chirpies. Yeah, I don't know the answer to your question. I mean, that was, I thought the reason for the Sharpie was so that it would stay on the pylon. That's really my bread Yeah, that isn't the reason. Oh, I don't know. We're using the Sharpie on paper, <laughs> whether we have to or not. Why don't we sit them up and go around all of them? Okay. Because we have to have the same spot. True, true. Is it okay to sign for that one? That's the one that he needs. Yeah. Then we sign these other three. three. Up there, right? I just need that one going last year. You wouldn't mind to sign one for me to keep going on the personal record there. Okay, so and then we need one for the town file. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty close to get Peter. Yeah, Thank you. So Mylar is gone. Uh, yeah, apparently. <laughs> End of an era <laughs> that extended back probably to the 1920s. I know, right? I mean, at that time, oh. it must have been so. Oh, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. yeah, maybe. 
yeah. maybe since then actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not a lot of plastic back there. Okay. Yeah. Big life. Yeah. Did they make it out of big life? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm left hand. You know, my first stint on the coming out back in the 80s uh, involving the subdivision of the old building. Thank you. And it's like I don't remember too much about <laughs> it. It, 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 it is. It's like parchment paper. Yes. I found a way to make fun Really? Back when it was used on placement out of business because it kind of parchment paper kind of went out. And there weren't any good runners. I know the place was like another one. All the way down seven or was it early 50s or something like that. And, you know, and nobody could, the judge kind of like bruised me. I, I can't figure this out. You, know? yeah, exactly. you could with a straight face, right? You know? yeah, well, I'm, uh, then when you've got. Are you setting up the, uh, the survey records? So it decides for you guys. So that's
All right, so Tyler, you're in business, right? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Best wishes going forward. Yeah. I think for the planning board, we have minutes to go over. Well, CEO yeah. update, yes. minutes, and then we'll probably want to talk about our timeline. All right. Richard, do you have any uh, updates? Yes. Uh, so I'm going to update you on the applications that I have. I'm going to give you a brief summary of each very quickly. Um, I was having some issues with the De Palma one that I have, and uh, Mr. De Palma came in yesterday. We sat down, and he had originally uh, put in an application a while back, but had done nothing with it, and he had inadvertently intertwined some of the, that paperwork with the new stuff so i was all confused so he came in and straightened me out so um this is uh on the gables end road he wants to add an addition off the back of the house to create a master bed and bath no change to the number of bedrooms so that's a quick i remember that first application uh, synopsis so, of that one the Schlossers are on Pine Beach Road. <clears throat> they want to renovate their camp and to uh, add a garage and remove and relocate the existing shed beyond the 100 foot setback. And had, I think we've seen them before, but then he Schlossers, yeah, tabled it or something. It seems as though that is correct. Okay. And I've got corrections on this application, so I, I dare say you're correct. And uh, I mean, a lot of these, I think, are real simple. This one is on Long Pond Drive. Uh, remove bunkhouse and rebuild exact to the exact same specifications. Uh, I believe this is the one that it got destroyed by a tree. And so they're just going to rebuild the same exact one. Whoops. And then uh, the, the beer is. Uh, which we just dealt with the subdivision. Now that they're they are no longer a subdivision, uh, Mr. Beers just wants to change his roof line, which slopes towards the water to slope away from the water. Um, and he's right on the water, pretty much. Uh, Kathleen Thompson Architects uh, over on Alphon Lane, Great Pond. They want to demolish the existing cottage down foundation and rebuild it to the same exact footprint. Um, Mr. Misevsky, 47 Random Way, wants to build a single family dwelling with a two car attached garage and a patio, all beyond the 100 foot water mark. So, but it is shoreland still considered. Mr. Welch, 151 Lynch Cove. Uh, wants to build a ramp, which we had talked about via email, uh, for entry into the cottage. They're about 25 feet from the water. Uh, his parents own the cottage and are having a hard, hard time with the stairs. He wants to build them a ramp, uh, six by six landing, and I believe it's like a 15 foot ramp or something like that. And lastly, Mr. Crew on uh, Castle View Road. Wants to add a 12 by 16 shed on a gravel uh, pad beyond the 100 foot water. Line. So, as you can see, a lot of these are pretty simple, especially the ones beyond 100 feet. Some of these things, I, I don't know whether they, I sent it to everybody on a reply to Richard, but you know, if, if we're going to get bogged down in uh, applications where they get backed up quite a bit. There, I know we're taking an amendment to the ordinance, but there's there would be no problem with DDP, at least I unless they change policies or, since I was there. But you know, coming up with I was initially thinking that you know you can amend the ordinance to say that uh, uh, allowing the code officer to deal with essentially decks and ramps like this or something the effect of uh, allowing for uh, additions to principal structures that involve no uh, walls and are not 
being proposed closer to the water so that Richard could deal with uh, uh, the ramp. If somebody wanted to build a deck on the side of the structure, uh, it wouldn't have to come to the planning board or even accessory structures uh, that are beyond 100 feet or something. Mm -hmm. Certain things that the code officer should is <laughs> qualified to issue a permit uh, without running through the planning board. Simple kind of things. Mm -hmm. that, that would have cut down on probably three of those yeah. applications. So that's, that's probably a good place to get to for us. It's not going to happen overnight. Right, because we'd have to amend the ordinance and go to the voters and all that sort of stuff. And that that's not part of our ordinance. Not now. The um, Rich, you had in that email exchange had indicated that um, there was something in statute that, that addressed with handicapped accessible ramps or access ramps, mm -hmm. and I couldn't find a pleasant thing in there. But it, it might not. I said Title Thirty Eight. It may be in the general municipal law, right? Some of Title oh, 30 or something. Like Title 30 or something. It might be in Title 30. I had read, I had read somewhere as well. And well, and that was my recollection that there was either an exemption or a limited exemption. Yeah, yeah it was like sealed. Statute says a town may, uh, and, and I don't, the thing I don't know is whether. It says a town may by way of ordinance. I don't think it says that. I think it says it just an outright town may allow for this ramp uh, if it's necessary to gain entrance to the structure. Yeah. Does it still require a permit or? Uh, I would say it does require a okay. permit. Right. The other thing is a, a memo that is always under legality. It's clear that if you attach a structure to a principal structure, it becomes part of the principal structure. So a rampway, even though you would think, oh, that's just an accessory structure, if you attach it to the building, it's, it principal. becomes part of the well, principal. Well, it's just like that. Yeah, right, right. I often wondered whether somebody could build something it's kind of like going around the, oh, you got, yeah, you don't attach it to the structure. You build it three inches away from it. And uh, Free you say, oh, this isn't attached. It's no longer, but in. But, but it seems, I mean, it seems weird to me that someone would have to come to the planning board to get a ramp to access the place. For medical reasons. Yeah, right. Or, you know, yeah. what, what yeah. are you going to say? No. <laughs> 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 pay on your taxes. Well, give us your tax money, but you can't get into the yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, really. And, and that, that thing about allowing that it was clearly put into law because of handicapped people, are sure. people getting old and uh, they may have been. Uh, uh, if they had to do it on the front, the, the front door is the only reasonable place to put it. And they've got to need a six foot wide ramp because they're wheelchair bound or five foot uh, of the expansion toward the water. Uh, and it's like, I tell somebody they can't get in their camp uh, because it's a violation of the ordinance. Uh, so anyway, I agree with you. Or you agree? With and you're not going to use it as a deck because the thing's tilted. So you're not going to be hanging out as a deck. Yeah. <laughs> what you wouldn't allow, or you shouldn't yeah. see, is the ramp going up, and then at the top of the ramp, it's eight by ten platform. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. That ultimately has one chair on it. <laughs> no, I and I spoke to Steve about it, and the the actual landing is six by six. Yeah. By, by yeah, yeah, that's I think the standard size for turnaround of a wheelchair. I think it may already be there. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. So he's actually only adding 60 square feet, four foot by 15 foot ramp. Um, okay. 
Well, I only looked because I, I was thinking I had it in my head that there might even be an exemption of some sort, you know, and, and if it was in statute, then it might preempt our ordinance. Yeah. And that, you know, we could check that one off. Well, we all but apparently that's not the case. I'll try to find that statute. I read the same I'm looking wrong. Although, you know, I did one of those statute searches. And still couldn't find yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, that tool that the legislature has is kind of useless anyway. So. But anyway, I, I'll see if I can find it and bring it to the next planning board. That's the same Thank we'll you. Here the next so, Richard, do we have um, any uh, gelling of dates for an extra meeting or two? Or? Uh, no, nobody's gotten back to me, Joy, except you and Rich. Sarah says she's available. Rich, did you get back to me on the dates? No. Said, no I, I get back to you. Did you? Uh, and he's not available, basically. <laughs> yeah. Right? Because he. Craig is. And I have not. You have. I've stayed out of it until we could talk. Right. So, uh, I mean, I'm going to make myself available whenever, and I understand your, your time frame is. Now we gotta have surgery. So. No, that's rich. Oh, that's, oh sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm having surgery. Yeah. You had not some, planned. Yeah, I, I'm gonna be out of town. Uh, so I think that maybe it would be us to just get George, Sarah together. Maybe just yeah. you gotta have three. Oh, you three. Gotta have three. Gotta have three. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think uh, at this point it will kind of be between you and Rich and Rich to see which and date. When I get at home, I can do Zoom. Oh. Yeah, and that would be consistent with the select board policy because right. it would be for a medical reason. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we can uh, start to do something like that. But I really think that there's no reason why uh, next week we can't throw three of these on. Yeah, three yeah. Three at least. Um, the diplomas may take a little bit of time. Um, based on what they're doing, uh, but you know, what as you guys heard, some of these could be on the 100 foot wide so kind of things. And we didn't approve through that previously, then, my they, the Palma? yeah, they withdrew it, or yeah, they, they didn't do it. Yeah, you know, so, if we ever amend our uh, amendments tonight, our application choice or something that would be probably good to put on there is what zoning district are you in because we we just most assume. of the time kind of assume it's yeah, in the but... residential district and you know even this the thinking is it's allowing this uh not really like expanding this or somebody who's within uh in the resource protection district when they're not supposed to be expanding i think at all uh, but just it'd be good to know that but yeah. i don't propose running out and amending it today almost harder to amend the form than it is to amend the ordinance <laughs> right or to ask the question <laughs> So I just want to make sure to kind of get back to what you were talking about, Richard, about maybe having a meeting next week. Is that correct? Uh, it's going to depend on the availability of, I think, George Rich. Yeah, Actually, I, Sarah seems to be fairly open, right? I won't be home until the weekend next week. So. But we'll do it on Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I know Craig works. All day, so I'm not trying to omit you. I just didn't want to put any pressure on you to feel like you had to volunteer more of your time. I'm in the same boat as Chris. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really so, and it's so it's hence the reason I'm going to we speak to these three. Yeah. The, um, I don't even remember what dates I, I told you I could make it. <laughs> Me either. I saved the email. Well, that's so, good. So, At least one of us. I thought your surgery was like the 28th. Pardon me? Yeah, you're. Be gone since Sunday. Is gone Sunday for surgery. Uh, I to get my chest covered. Get a new valve. I thought it was on the twenty eighth. They moved it. Oh, I yeah. see. They moved it to May second. 
Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, so okay. It'll, it'll be next Monday. I think it's Monday. May 2nd is a Monday. It's yeah. two Mondays from now. So, right, because yeah. today's only the 21st. So, next Monday is the 25th. Yeah. May 2nd is the Monday following. Oh. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I will be here next week, right? <laughs> that's what yeah, I was that's thinking. What, yeah. <laughs> well, I thought you were still having your surgery next week. That's why. No, I, I, no, okay. I, I can do something next week. Uh, we just got to make sure we have enough time to provide the public notice. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's right. And yeah. is that seven George days? George is busy on seven Tuesday. Days. Tuesday. What's that? George is busy Tuesday morning. That's right. Well, if you're going to give seven days notice, that means it, it really can't be before Friday. Yeah. yeah. Right? So that's the 29th. It's kind of close. There. So we can look into the, well, we can look into the next week in that rich Zoom. Let me just offer you this. It's going to be unrealistic to have um, Rich as a participant too early in the week. Yeah. I don't have my calendar in front of me. Yeah. Uh, just because of the nature of his surgery. He'll be upright and talking. That's all we need. Yeah. <laughs> but the thinking part no, will be a different story. <laughs> his focus will be elsewhere. Are you guys out? Friday, is it Friday totally after you guys? I, I can't remember. Um, I, I looked at my calendar when I responded to you, but. What, if we do it Friday, what time Friday would be? I don't know. It'd have to be morning yeah. for me. Yeah. It will be morning for me too. Yeah. I serve Elizabeth Camp. We'll do that Friday in the morning. <laughs> we can let George uh, look at his calendar. Yeah, why don't I revisit George's? Email with his availability, and I put so maybe put something together tomorrow. Uh, actually, not in tomorrow. Put something together next week, but then we'd have to decide real quick, right? Oh no, you have to announce it tomorrow. That's the thing. Yeah, no, that's the thing. Yeah, you have to announce it tomorrow morning. Unless you can get Anthony to do it or something like that. Yeah. If you're out, that would put a lot on this. Oh, do you have my email handy, by chance? Probably bring it up if you like. Then, then we would know if we got three. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, I can't remember. Well, I can't. Uh, going through the minutes while strong. Yeah, to let's try and at least get a chance to sure. go through some minutes. Sure. I only see one thing I want to change. Uh, yeah. I don't find too much to comment on. No, he's very thorough. Well, it made sense to me because I thought it was still on the way. That's what I was thinking too. Oh, I see. I adjourn. Mr. Seal, Langette, move for adjourn. So we're going to take out Langette there. Oh, I'm sorry. Seal, Langette, that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right. Has everybody had a chance to get through the uh, minutes? Mm -hmm. So uh, just please speak up so the uh, owl can hear you if you have anything to say, but uh, any edits? I can see one, I didn't see George Seal listed as a planning board member present. And by God- I can't remember he, much, but I do remember that I was at that meeting. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd like to make sure that George Seal is included as a listed member of the planning board who was present. Um, that's my only thing. Anybody else have something? I know Sarah, you've already indicated something. Yeah, at the number four adjourn says Mr. Seal on get so 
Let's cross out the line, get there. Got it. Uh, Anybody else have any suggested edits? George? Uh, in terms of remote attendees, uh, Mr. Randall Briggs, the applicant. Oh. Yep. Good point. So for, to include Randall Briggs. Oh. We're good for the Friday, then. Oh. 29th. Is what we're talking about. Yeah, Friday the 29th in the morning. Okay, so if it's so if we put it up tomorrow, we'll be all set. Yep, yes. it'll be seven days. Yes, it Now, this side is going to be here. Uh, this is remote. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I know Sarah's not a big fan of in person, but I think we probably have to be more of a sure. Yeah, no, I agree. We'll do it. So thank you. Thank you all three for doing that, doing sure. an extra. Yeah. You know, yeah. every second of the year I started doing this like that. Yeah. <laughs> It was, that was the reason why I got in because you guys need a lot of help. Us, so we shut it down exactly a year ago. Wow. When that's what do we need to do to notify public? Well, it's, it's got to be noticed on the website. Yeah. So you just basically put it on an agenda and put it in the, in the website that's going to be next Friday. Yep. All right. You guys have a and a number of that you'd like to stick to as far as how many we do. Take from the simplest ones you have. Right. And no more than three. Yeah, I would say three. Two. That makes sense. We'll probably take us an hour and a half anyway. And if you get three done next week, that are there seven or Eight. Eight. So cut it down um, considerably. Yes. And then we, I, I'm assuming more applications will be coming in. I, I don't know that. I stand okay. correct. You write seven. Seven. Um, yes, uh, they're coming in almost eight. Well, yeah. Fortunately, a lot of them have been non shore late. Speaking of myself. All right. So that, that way we know that there's still a load. Out there for other other applications to deal with, and eventually we need to talk about our timeline. Um, what are we going to do in May mm -hmm. and June, right? But before we get too far, we, we went through the minutes. We want to make I know a squirrel. Um, want to make sure we, we we finish wrapping up the minutes. So, can I motion we approve the minutes as amended? Thank you. Second. Second. All those in. Any more discussion? All those in favor? So, Craig. Yes. Sarah? Yes. George? Yes. Rich? Yes. I two in favor. Five in favor, none opposed. Thank you very much uh, for that. Um, we have to close the meeting? Uh, by agenda? By agenda, I suppose so, because then we need to talk about our thing. So I take a motion to close the meeting. Did you want to talk about that? I did, but it's not on the agenda. Oh, OK. It's not part of old business. I guess not. So okay. I'd like to work. I'd like to clean that up a little bit better going forward because it, it's a thing. But we want to close the meeting and then we'll get into it. Talk about time. I move to adjourn the meeting today. Thank you. And I'll second. Second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? So Craig, Sarah? Yes. George? Yes. Rich? Yes. I two in my favor. We're adjourned. Um, now, timeline. We need to discuss. Oh, yeah, thanks. So, oops. So I'm going to go leave. Leave. That's still the recording. Yeah. Oh, funny.